Today I'm catching up with Christian Bezadenhout, who is joining the Irish Chamber Orchestra for a series of concerts in April. Now, I imagine the piano can be a bit lonely, it's a very self-sufficient instrument, and I wanted to find out if Christian prefers playing the piano with an orchestra, in a chamber ensemble, or on his own. <laughs> Honestly, playing the piano with colleagues is really my favourite thing to do. Uh, I have never been one of those pianists who was drawn to the life of a kind of solitary uh, solo uh, recitalist, in a sense. I find, in a certain way, playing concertos is kind of the best combination of real chamber music and then, of course, an orchestral landscape as well, uh, which as a keyboard soloist is just the most gratifying thing to do. It doesn't hurt, of course, that this repertoire, especially the Mozart piano concertos, happens to be some of the greatest music ever written and arguably the greatest body of piano concertos that we have at our disposal. So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, when you come to play with the ICO, as you say, we're playing two Mozart piano concertos, number 18 and number 25. So when I had listened to these, I thought, number 18, it's really nice, but it's a piano piece with an orchestra accompanying. But number 25, to me, it sounds like a complete symphony that the piano is part of the orchestra. So what I wondered is how you see these works differently and what do they mean to you individually on, on a kind of personal level? It's very true what you say, Matthew. I, th I think Mozart's conception of the piano concerto changes quite dramatically um, around this time. You can tell that in 456, the B flat concerto, the earlier of the two pieces, there's still a, a huge um, kind of premium being placed on, on the display of virtuosity. Now that's not to say that the C major concerto 503, number 25, is not a virtuoso piece, but as you say, the framework of the C major is completely differently structured. I think it, it was E.T.A. Hoffman who says that Mozart's piano concertos are kind of like symphonies with, with piano obligatos, as you so rightly say. And that comes absolutely into fruition and becomes crystallized in these later pieces when Mozart is sort of almost presaging the kind of symphonic breadth and scale of someone like Beethoven. I mean, the introduction of the C major concerto alone for the orchestra is, is, is enormous. Um, I wonder, I think possibly Mozart is starting to see that the barriers between the symphony and the piano concertos are, are not so clearly uh, delineated as one would hope. And, and that the C major, as you so brilliantly point out, really presages a kind of proto proto symphony i love to think of it as as the spotlight constantly shifting and the piano is sometimes very much in the limelight at other at other times it very much recedes into a into a accompanimental role and of course mozart understands that the the key players in this are the winds and in the c major piano concerto of course the winds have the most exquisitely um beguiling music to play so, <laughs> so the ICO, I mean, really, we're kind of like a really big muddled up family. <laughs> and the members of the orchestra, we're so excited to be welcoming you back to play with us again. And I wonder, what is it like for you traveling around the world, working with so many different artists, so many different groups, and having to kind of work out the relationships? Sometimes you're a soloist, sometimes you direct. How does all that fit in with you as a person? Well, oh, you know, Matthew, the thing about, um, as we mentioned earlier, the, the most gratifying thing that you can do is you can walk into a rehearsal and feel that people, A, want to be there, and B, are excited to be putting something together that is, as we said earlier, not just a, a, a symphony or a piano concerto, ostensibly orchestral music, but something that is created from within. And I find directing from the keyboard in projects like this, I've always had the sense that people are so grateful for the chance to do something together with the soloist. This is really in stark contrast to showing up at a really large scale deluxe symphony orchestra with the conductor where you you know have a rehearsal of half an hour with the conductor where you talk through the piece and then you sit in front of the orchestra for maybe two hours and just go through the piece. Working on a program like this with, with ICO is wonderful because we're all doing it from the beginning. You know, I'm the musical leader of the project, but of course I'm playing at the same time. And that that brings a different kind of sense of ownership to these um, 
these concerts, which I find so gratifying. And of course, then it doesn't hurt that we're playing Mozart piano concertos, among other things. And I think people in the group are always kind of re-inspired and reminded of how remarkable this music is and how much it gives the orchestra to do. It, you can really, you know, kind of sink your teeth into these pieces. I, I find these sorts of projects the most uh, demanding and exhausting because, of course, I, I have to be, you know, uh, kind of um, aware of what's going on in the rehearsals in a much more vivid way than if I just show up and play a piano concerto with, with a symphony orchestra. But the, the final result is so much more, there's so much more kind of collective responsibility involved and that is deeply, deeply moving, I find, in these projects. So they give me a lot of energy. Christian, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I cannot wait. I really am very excited to meet you in person and start working on this absolutely wonderful music. Oh, you're so welcome, Matthew. Thank you for chatting with me. <laughs> <laughs>